Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm back, baby, I'm back for the round table for this week. And I'm very excited to be joined by, you know him, you love him, Eric Jotnot Pro Peterson, David, the Facebook whisperer, Banalis, Big Daddy, Tate Litchfield with that newborn. And of course, we can't forget about the Zen master, Mike Zeno. And look, do we even need to go on and on about landmodo.com, scotttodd.net, and most importantly, that automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, the one, the only <laughs> Scott Todd. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm, gl- I'm glad to be back. Uh, I-, I heard a couple of the, of the podcasts you guys did without me. And, um, you know, the fact that everybody was so nice to Eric kind of hurt a little bit. <laughs> but that's, that's okay because now I'm back and the hazing will commence. Let's just get into it, guys. <laughs> I think Let's that the downloads were much higher when you weren't here for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to check the, uh, I'll have to check the numbers on that. Yeah. So, it must have been my mom. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. It was, it was Eric's family completely. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the constant check bouncer as sort of the first topic. Um, you know, Eric, how do you describe the constant check bouncer? Oh, man. So, you know, I think uh, not only the, the check bouncer, I think that that also applies just to the automated payment maker, the one that, uh, you know, just always has an excuse as to why, you know, that payment failed this month and, you know, they'll make it up and, and catch it up next month and, and that kind of stuff. But I mean, the, the check is, is almost worse. Uh, you know, you got to, deposit that check and, and deal with it and wait for the bank to tell you that it didn't make it and um, all that. So uh, yeah, I mean, those, those uh, buyers are not fun. No, not, not at all. David Benalis, what, what do you have with those? Do you, do you have any, any of those guys or you, gals? You, you give them an inch, they take a mile. Uh, I was way too graceful in the beginning, but now I just stick to the exact terms. Uh, no excuses. I don't care anymore. Um, I've done the nice guy thing. Oh yeah. Three days late. No problem. You know, you're past your grace period. All right. Don't worry about the penalty. Enough of that. Uh, I, you stick to the playbook and you just got to do what's best for you as your company. And look, if they default, they default. In fact, I would encourage them. I'll just have a very open conversation saying like, I'm kind of tired of these payments not being on time. You know, what's the solution here? Let yeah, that, that's a, that's a good line, Tate. How do you handle it? And do, uh, and do you have many? No, we don't have too many. Um, but we do have. I'd, I'd say we have about two people that are consistently, you know, they're consistently late. And so I've done what David's done and just called them up and said, "Listen, this needs to end because you know this is causing a headache for every single person involved in the contract. What can we do to to alleviate this?" And sometimes. It comes down to renegotiating the the amount that they're paying every month, um, and other times they'll flat out tell me, you know what, I've I just don't want it anymore. I I can't do this. You know, I had a lady tell me this this week. She was late for two months in a row, and I called her up and I said, hey, what's going on? Why are your payments late? I thought we you know resolved this the other day, and she said, you know what, I moved. It's not going to work out. Why don't you just have the property back? So sometimes the easiest way to resolve it is just pick up the phone and call them get in touch with them and, and make that communication. But it's annoying. It's really annoying. But Geek Pay kind of eliminates a lot of these issues. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to like talk a whole lot about Geek Pay, but I know that we are uh, creating a pre-auth with Actum. So Actum won't run it until they can pre-authorize that they actually have the funds. And then once they authorize that they have the funds, then they're going to run it to kind of eliminate the, the bad check guy yeah, but- uh, or gal. But Mark, one of the things that we do is because we're using Geek Pay and you can you can bill using multiple forms, you can have a primary, a secondary form of payment. When we sign all of our legal contracts, we make sure we get a credit card number and ACH payment info. So if one fails, we always have a backup. So for somebody to miss a payment, they got to have no money in any of their accounts. So it's pretty, I want to say it's more rare than it used to be. Right. And then it's pretty clear, like, okay, this person 
shouldn't own this property. And it's really easy to send them out that, Hey, let's just, you know, end this now, sign this document and uh, let's just part ways as friends. So then it then becomes really easy. Yep. Uh, the Zen master, Mike Zeno, how do you handle it? I know you don't do a ton on notes, Mike, but those that you do. I think, I think that everybody's kind of touched upon some good areas. And, and I think that in the beginning, you know, when you first start, it may take a while to recognize, oh, this is truly your business, man. Everybody gets a little nice in the beginning. And it's like, like David said, you give them a little bit to keep taking. So, you know, maybe uh, they're a little late, the check bounces, whatever it may be. And you just, just like, oh, no big deal. You know, you might even say that in the beginning because you're just being too nice. Then that creates a pattern of behavior. So I think, you know, looking at your business as it truly is, it's a, a business that you're running. Um, and, uh, you know, sticking to the terms of the agreement and, you know, charging late fees and definitely grabbing multiple sources of payment if you can, like uh, Tate said with Kike. So I think you've covered, you know, but I agree with everything everybody said. It's kind of uh, one of those things you learn early in the business, you know, that you, it's not good to get burned. All right. Am I, am I the only one that's hearing Mike a little muffled? We got to work on your mic, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh, not my yeah. new mic. Hey, Mike, just uh, change your audio input on your computer to your headset. I think that's the issue. Yeah, but that's okay. Let's, uh, you know, I, I love, I, or I shouldn't say I love, I never get tired of listening to the Scott Todd philosophy of collections. So, for, Scott, let's, get, let's give you the last word on this. For first, the, the mic, we got to fix your mic, Mike. That's like uh, Roger, Roger. So that was kind of what's fun. your what's your vector, Victor? What's your vector? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, the the way that I handle it is really the way that the power company would handle it, right? Like I handle all of our collections the exact same way. Hey, the the bill is on this day. If you don't pay, no problem. I'm not gonna call, scream at you. The the late payment kicks on on this day, and you know you'll get a notice saying, hey, your payment's due on this day. If you still don't make the payment on this day religiously on the 30th day, the, um, the notice of default goes out. And when that goes out, you have 35 days and on 35 days, boom, you turn around and, uh, you lose the, uh, the property, you get a termination notice. So it's very, 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 very methodical. In fact, I did that. I execute on that. And this guy literally called me back, um, after two months, two months after losing this property, like, I did it. And he's like, I, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I just, I just realized that I, that, that you told me I turned, my contract was terminated. Can I please, please, please buy the property back? I don't want to lose it. And we hadn't sold it yet. So I'm like, um, sure, you can buy it back, but you have to make all those payments that you missed as well. Like, so you have to pay everything that you owed up until the termination date. Plus you have to make two more payments because it's been 60 days. So like last week he paid like $1,250, right? Like to catch everything up. It's like, man, that was fantastic. It, it's funny how that worked out, but it was very like, this is what it takes to, to get the property back. And if it's not there, it's not there. There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I started off like that. I was very nice in the beginning. And now I, I you know, we've, we've adopted that strategy, just like the power company. Um, there's not a whole lot of wiggle room there. Uh, and that's why I don't like, yeah. I mean, like, that's why I don't like telling anybody like, oh, this is my company or I'm the, I'm the owner of the company because then they know that you're the guy that can make the changes as opposed to, oh man, I work for the man, you know, like, I, I don't know, I, I'm the general manager around this place, but something like that, I got to go talk to the man and his name is Mark and he is not going to be happy about this. No, I don't want to talk to Mr. Mark about this, man, because Mr. Mark's not going to be happy. So please just pay the bill. I love that. I love that. So it's, it's no secret that August typically tends to be, of the 12-month year, the slowest in land sales. And I, my guess is it's back to school, or maybe it's just, you know, summer fatigue or whatever it is. You know, people spend a lot of money in June and July on vacation, and then August, they're, they're reloading. I, I really, that's, you know, I'm just speculating. But uh, Tate does not slow down in August. And so we want to pick his brain. What do you do, Tate, to keep August and the, you know, going and, and the, the machine rolling? Yeah, good question. So, I mean, 
whenever I started this business, I remember everybody telling me, August, 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 you got to prepare, you got to prepare. So I sat down and thought, well, what can I do to prevent it from hurting me uh, financially? And so I came up with a couple different promotions that I like to run. Um, and you can run a promotion for just about anything. You know, one of the best hits that we have as far as promotion goes is it's, we call it like our August matchathon. Whatever you put down on your down payment on a property, we're going to match it. And so that helps us keep property moving out the door. The other thing that we'll sometimes do is, you know, eliminate dock fees. We'll just try to incentivize it and make it irresistible. And, you know, we're doubling down on our mailings uh, to our buyers list. We're hitting them. We used to hit them, you know, three, four times a week. Now we're going every single day of the week. They're getting something in the mail or something in their inbox. So we're really, really aggressive. I would say August is the most aggressive month for us when it comes to targeting our buyers list. Um, so that's kind of what I do. And it works. I mean, it's August 1st and we've had sales this month already. So, you know, August doesn't have to be this big, bad, scary month if you plan accordingly, right? Right. I mean, Scott, you had a sale today, August 1st. Where did that sale come from? Uh, Craigslist, where all my sales come from. <laughs> no, no, no neighbor sales, no list sales, all from Craigslist. Come on. Well, okay. So here's what happened. The majority happens. come from Craigslist. Well, no, like my sales come from Craigslist. Okay. Like literally what happens is I place ads on Craigslist and then they respond to the ads. Now they may not have responded like and bought right then and there. Okay. But they're onto the buyer's list. And then what happens is once they get onto the buyer's list, well, then when we do a blast out or something, then they will respond to that. So it's not like I'm placing an ad today and they come tomorrow and buy the property. What happens is I have to kind of like build up that cold traffic into warm traffic where they know, like, and trust me. And then when I do that, man, that's what generates all my sales. But the only place that I advertise on or at is Craigslist. It's the only place that I find my ads, my people. I love it. So Eric Peterson, what do you, what are you doing to plan for August? Um, well, I, I am, uh, going to be running a few more Craigslist ads than normal. I've, uh, been getting some new accounts ready to, to get going. So, um, that was in the plans to, to just kind of increase that. Um, I'm also, um, working on some other pieces of the puzzle, I guess, and in, in launching some new, uh, things on my website. Um, you know, I'll continue to, to do my buyer's list emails and, and run specials. Um, you know, I, I kind of like Tate's idea of matching the down payment. So I might try something like that this month, um, along with my regular promotions. Um, and uh, that's, that's about it. I'm just trying to do a little bit more of everything um, to, to try and keep the sales going. I love it. David Benalis, what are you doing? Oh, David, I can't hear you. There we there go. You know. All kinds of audio issues on this podcast. <laughs> so this is my second August. The first one was a month after I just got out of boot camp. So that one doesn't really count. This one, this one's going to be for the books. So in addition to the usual deal of the week stuff, I'm doing more relational emails. Um, like, uh, National Tell a Joke Day, August sixteenth. It's an excuse for me to send an email. So I'm going after these weird holidays this month to just make contact with them to get that initial open. And then, as usual, after I end whatever the uh, the funny stuff is, I'll go check out what properties I have, or here's a list of what I have right now. So, I think it'll be interesting to see this August compared to last August as far as how Facebook uh, changes the landscape of sales because. Last August, we weren't really talking about selling on Facebook. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they just weren't ready for it. Um, and now, I mean, I know, you know, anecdotally, like you'll, you'll vox me like, you know, so-and-so just had another sale on Facebook. And, um, you know, I wonder how much that's going to have an effect. What's, what's your thinking on that? I think in general, no matter what platform, you know, people are busy wrapping up summer, maybe one last summer vacation before school. So that's not going to change. Um, for the listeners, like everyone is increasing their efforts in one way or the other. So, you know, you bring that to a platform like Facebook, just increase your efforts. Just, you know, 
you're going to post more, interact more, and your sales will continue. Um, we don't mean to put fear like, oh, don't, don't bother doing anything in August because you won't make any sales. It just means you have to work a little bit harder, but also use this time to you know, refine the systems. So. Right, right. And, and, and also um, your expectations, right? You know, August is just, it's slower. So you, you mentally need to double down, right? If you're not on Land Moto listing, go on Land Moto. This is the month to, be, to do that. If you're not sending out your neighbor letters consistently, this is the month to do it, right? If you're not automating your Craigslist and Facebook postings, this is the month to start doing it and, and, uh, and, and getting that going. Uh, Mike Zeno, how's, how's August for you typically? Um, usually we do. We, we still have sales in August. It doesn't slow. How's my audio, by the way? Great. Great. Okay. Look at, I look at it like this. If you look at the seasons, right, the four seasons, you know, we're in the end of the, you know, that summer season. So the, the spring, you're like, it's like a person in their life. You're born, then you're growing up in, in the, uh, you know, you're born in the winter, you're growing up in the spring. Summer is when you reap all the benefits of all the work you've done. So this points to one thing, come on, Scott. This points to one thing. Did you buy your land right? If you follow the model and you set yourself up right, you can do everything here we're talking about. But if you have, I got to have landitis and you spend too much, well, then you're going to have a hard time matching your down payment. You're going to have a hard time adding a joke. Uh, uh, National Joke Day, right? You're going to have a hard time running that spot. You're going to have a hard time selling your buyers list if you don't buy these properties right. So set yourself up right. Um, maybe that's not a good advice for right now for someone who already did that. But think about this. This model, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, I look at it like that. I have a kind of, you know, I have a quirky way to look at things. So this is the part of the year we reap all that hard work we did in those first uh, few months, uh, our first half of the year. And that's all about buying property right. You can't do any of this unless you buy your property correctly. Yeah, I, I like the uh, the farming analogy because really oh, Scott that's did. yeah. <laughs> Scott's laughing. Scott, why are you smiling? He hates my quotes. I know it. <laughs> I don't, Mike. I don't hate your quotes. I just think that they're funny because, like, you know, like you're called the Zen Master for a reason, right? Like you're very calm. I'm getting you some hand soap. That's it. <laughs> Two guys hand soap. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh man. I I don't know if I get the joke. <laughs> oh, Mark. <laughs> No, see, that's what football. happens when you go away for 30 days. But, <laughs> you know, Mike, Mike and I at the boot camp a couple years ago in Orlando at, you know, the one by SeaWorld. We, we had, had a moment. moment. Because they had, the, <laughs> Marriott had the best, like, hand soap. It had, like, Ever. I don't, in the bathrooms. It was, like, the stuff that had, like, I don't know. It's, like, I don't know. When you rubbed it, it made your hands soft. We already had that in Scottsdale. I hope they have this in Scottsdale. If they have it in Florida, they better have this in Scottsdale. This soap. And and so Mike and I really, really, really enjoyed like the the soft hands that you got from the bathroom. I was washing my hands. I looked over at Scott, and he's like, "Yeah, this is the best soap ever." And so Mike and I, at that moment, decided we would start our own soap company. And the name that the last name we stuck with was like. Two guys hand soap, but we don't think that's really appropriate for what we're trying to achieve here. So, <laughs> all right, that's now, the now, yeah. Now, uh, now I get you know. It, it's funny because I was wondering like why you guys like were constantly holding hands at boot camp, <laughs> where, you know. And I can, now now it makes complete yeah. sense. Yeah, you guys is like the, the hands are so soft. You see what oh, happens so. when you go to boot camp? Like <laughs> magic, magic. <laughs> magic. Yeah. By the way, boot camps in in ten days. Is that crazy? That's crazy. It's crazy. It's it, it's that room is packed. Well, when this podcast comes out, it'll be three days or be, yeah, less, be, less than that. Right, right. I mean, it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and Orlando is just about full. So if you haven't booked Orlando yet, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash bootcamp and uh, get in Orlando. I think the next one will be in Tate's backyard, Woo. so we can all play with the baby. Yep, Vegas. Awesome. Uh, we got to talk to Danielle about that. All right, so um, I took off this month. Scott took off half the month. Eric, how much did you take off this month? Uh, for July, I guess I took about uh, 10 days or so. 10 days. David, how much did you take off? I took a weekend off. A weekend off? Yeah. Uh, Tate? Uh, I don't know. I'm at the point now where it's like every day is the weekend, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so Tate, Tate, Tate goes to his wife. He's like, "What day is it today?" Yeah, is it Friday? But every no, I would say I probably took a good solid uh, ten days off where I just kind of debriefed. 
played with the uh, baby. And Mike, I know you're on vacation for a while. Yeah, I had about 14 days. That's true. Look, I, I, I never know what to, we had a medical. And one of the things you ask somebody, when, you know, hey, you're okay. Tell me the day, that, you know, what day of the week is it? You know, so I can establish. So the guy told me, I look back, I'm like, I don't even know what day of the week it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand what Tate's saying. Sometimes we just, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's a good thing about it, right? Just right, right. So for, for me, you know, I talked to Danielle about it and uh, I wanted to, you know, be able to do this 30 day challenge of completely unplugging, right? No calls, uh, very little email, no Vox, no podcasts. You know, what would happen basically to the business um, and with my, without my involvement at all? Um, it was very humbling in the sense that revenues actually went up with me gone. <laughs> so, uh, and the systems didn't break, nothing broke. If anything, um, I, I learned that there were a couple areas where I was still a little bit of a bottleneck that are uh, easily fixed. But other than that, like, um, and I was talking to Scott about this, the machine cranked, and now I'm very anxious about the machine being this smooth, right? Scott, do you, did you feel the same thing? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, it, it's, I think it's an uneasy feeling because in a way you might be feeling like, um, like, man, the, the place ran without me. Do I really have an existence? And at the same time, isn't that why we all have built companies that, that do this, right? We're, we're building a company so that we can enjoy true freedom without having to sit behind a computer or in an office or, you know, thinking we can just go live. And that's what you did. Yeah. And it, yeah, so it's, it's a little bit like, uh, be careful what you wish for, right? It's like, okay, uh, now I got to start something else. Like, well, it's like, we always need new problems to have better problems. I mean, this is a really good problem, but yet still, you know, an existential problem in the fact like, uh, now what do I do with my life? Like, you know, frontiers running smoothly, land geeks running smoothly. Uh, I don't know. Geek pays, you know, up and coming. Like we have the systems, we have the processes, the machine is cranking. Uh, I can't travel the world. The kids are in school. Like, what am I going to do? I guess go on the boat with Scott. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. I do that. Yeah. Uh, Eric, what was it like for 10 days with you? How, how did the systems hold up? <clears throat> um, the systems I have in place, uh, held up very well. Um, the, you know, I've got a due diligence team that, that handles my due diligence and, and that continued to run uh, completely smoothly. Um, I also have a team that works on ads for me. They write the ads and get the ads posted. Um, that went very well. And, uh, you know, it just showed me the areas that I need to focus on building more systems so I can spend less time on the business, you know, especially on those days on the way. Yeah, yeah, David. Why did you only take a weekend off? I'll I'll rest in 2018. I love it. You're, I, so, I got a lot of work to do. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's you know goes down to the power of purpose, right? The power of the why. So David doesn't want to take time off because his why is so big and his purpose is so big. Um, you don't want to not work in a way. Is that how you feel? Yeah, I mean, I got urgency like no one's ever. I mean, not not one like I've never experienced before for sure. So if I'm not, you know, working on my own land business, I'm working on how I can refine, you know, some other systems I have in my life. And no matter what it is now, I'm just constantly tinkering. I'm really thinking like the CEO that I've always should have been. And whether it's, you know, wrapping up the shop at this point, now we're starting to put the gears in motion for that. Uh, so yeah, that's going to take a lot of time as well. Um, no rest for the weary. <laughs> I'll rest in 2018. I love it. Tate Litchfield, big papa. How was it? taking time off you know it's all like you said it's it's an alarming thing when you when you take time off and you're getting emails that hey this sold and you're like wait what that was we were mar oh, great that's fantastic uh what do i you know and you realize that you kind of are a little bit eliminated or you're out of the loop and it's a weird feeling but it's like scott said it's the whole point to doing this business right it's that passive income that we all want and in that passive lifestyle, if you know, family comes in town, guess what? I'm available. I can drive you to the airport. I can pick you up. I can hang out. Lunch sounds good. Let's do whatever, right? That's, that's the beauty of it. So taking time off, I don't know. I think it, 
it serves such a greater purpose because you come back after a few days of being unplugged and you're like, oh yeah, let's get it. Let's do it. I want to do it again. And those breaks are what motivate me to work twice as hard when I am working, right? Because the breaks are so, so wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, it was really interesting, you know, when I came back, the, the feeling was um, it's not the destination of being able to take 30 days off that was so great. It's looking back and being like, boy, did I love that journey of being able to be able to take 30 days off. And now I want to like just improve that journey and go into the next sort of, uh, you know, adventure for the business. And not now what can we do? Right. Um, and then, you know, take that little break again. Uh, but I, th- I think that sometimes that gets lost is like, we kind of think about the destination, destination, and we, and we lose sight of, of how uh, fulfilling, even though at times it sucks, but how fulfilling it can be to just go through that journey. Mike Zeno, not to seal your profound Zen master thunder. Uh, what was it like for you? <laughs> well, I think, you know, I- I'm not at the point to take the 30 days off and everything runs, but I think what you described is you can have that in small increments. You know, this is always this point where you, there's something you always do. And then that task gets farmed out to a VA or into a system. And then there's a slight amount of emptiness that's left, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, I don't have to do that now. Now what, you know, when you're looking for something. So I think that everybody will experience that on smaller uh, levels until they build up to, the point where they can do that, you know, hopefully I'm looking forward to that, you know, that idea of, you know, retiring from the fight up Bob and, and just having the business run by itself. So I think taking these mini vacations points to bottlenecks, exactly like you said, everybody's going to be, um, have different bottlenecks in their system. And uh, it, 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 times like that is when they come up to the surface and you find them and they stick out like a sore thumb. And now you know what you have to work on. You come back from that vacation, though, reinvigorated and full of energy to tackle those, uh, those bottlenecks. All right. Fantastic. Um, now we're at that point where I guess we can all sort of agree to pick on Eric. It is time for tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe even a Zen master type quote. Something, oh. anything that will improve the art of passive and con- con- <laughs> art of passive income listeners' lives and their businesses. Let's start with David Shh. Facebook Whisper Banalis. Mark, I'm so glad that you started with me first. Uh, I've had some calls in the past week where I've almost had like I've had to calm people down because when they get to this part of the podcast, it does give a little anxiety. So if you're listening right now. Take a deep breath. Know that you just got to do the basics in this business. You know, mailing and marketing. This stuff you're about to listen to is the kind of the icing on the cake. This will get you from 85% automated to 86% automated. It's not going to make or break your business. So be mailing, be marketing, just breathe like Mike Zeno, and you could be the, the fly on the horse's tail. And now... Who's the horse? <laughs> Scott Todd. <laughs> So now here's my tip of the week. It's actually, it's not original to me. Um, <laughs> Cynthia Tripathi was kind of introduced it to me. Mike Zeno really hopped on board. Streak for Gmail. Uh, this is my CRM for sales side of choice now. Because it integrates with Gmail, there's so many features there that we typically have given tips on like Boomerang and uh, other ones like Gorgeous Templates. Mix Max, I love Mix Max. Uh, no one loves Mix Max. Everyone else, all these things are integrated into uh, Streak and I'm loving it right now. So yeah, no one loves Mix Max, Mark. <laughs> it's getting ugly early. I mean, this really turned. We, we, we all <laughs> dark fast. Was like yeah. terrible, man. Like, why, why is Mix, I'm still using it. Why is Mix Max so terrible? It's old. It's, Mark, it's, Mark, there's, there's one there's one thing in there that's a deal breaker for me all right what like, is it i really love the fact that i can go into my gmail settings and like there's a setting called archive uh send an archive right so, so that when you hit when you have that turned on and you and you reply all you have to do is hit the tab key and it sends the email and it archives it and when you're using mix max that thing goes away Oh, uh, okay. That's a deal breaker for me. Okay. And then I got to go another step and move it and archive it. So, and it's old. Man. 
Wow. Streak. But like I can snooze my emails. They boomerang back. It's free. I've got the templates. There's a lot you can do in Mixmax for free. But it's okay. old. It's old. I don't know. And I, wow. That, look, that look, was, look what happens when you take 30 days off. That was a great I, 2016 tip, Mark. Appreciate it. I mean, I've, I've aged so much in this business. Just 2015, like, man. They want their, they want their apps. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Let's go to Tate, Big Daddy Litchfield. Tate, what's your tip of the week? All right. So I got sent um, uh, a tool recently or a link to a website uh, actually from my wife, Allison, because she uh, runs a graphic design company and she was having me check this out. And it's a, it's a website called onroadmap.com. Onroadmap.com. Yeah. And so what, basically I got it from her and the way it is, it's a, it's kind of this outline for, for managing big projects. So I thought about applying it and I just got it today. I started looking into it. You know, there's a, a small fee of $19 a month to manage it. But the way that you can use it is if you're doing a big project, maybe hiring a VA to do something or getting something off your plate, you can manage it. And um, in this service, and it's got, a super easy to understand layout. Um, it's super fluid. I don't know. I, I haven't messed around with it too much, but um, her company started using it and, and what they're doing, it seems to work really, really well. So I can't say I've tested it yet, but um, you know, it seems like you can automate some things, drag and drop different responsibilities, assignments. So I think that it could be a useful uh, tool for, for what we do in managing people from all over the world all over the world. Yeah. I mean, there's a little site that's free called Trello that does the exact yeah. same thing. Why, why wouldn't we use Trello? I don't know. I mean, I, everybody knows about Trello. It, it works great. I like Trello. This one came across and I thought, Hey, it's kind of interesting. He clearly is stretching for a tip of the week. That's a stretch. Oh, I got the, 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 you know what? <laughs> I got sent this one. All right. Oh yeah, okay. man, this is a brutal one. <laughs> this, this is, yeah. It's I mean, okay, we're gonna give, hey, I've stretched for tips of the week too. It's okay. Tate, was, Tate's got the newborn. We're going to give him a break. It was a stretch, I know, but I haven't tested it. Right. <laughs> Next week, his tip's going to be goodnight, gorilla. Listen, I'm just exhausted, okay, guys? Just a bit outside. Here. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, man. All right. So, it, you know, when we're up with you at three in the morning, yeah, we'll go check on this. onroadmap.com. Yep. All right. Zen Master Mike Zeno, what's your tip of the week? When I give my tip, I can never look at Scott because it gives me all, he, he's always such a smile when I talk about my tips. This one is inspired by a horse though. So it's a good one. <laughs> no, this, no, this is a really good one. It really is. This one really applies to our business. Okay, you ready? It's, this is a quote from someone who loves horses. Uh, I, I love horses too, but that's another thing. I find mucking stalls strangely similar to raking a Zen garden. I'll say it one more time, then I'll explain. I find mucking stalls, you know, cleaning the stalls, strangely similar, similar to raking a Zen garden. Now, how does that relate to our business? It relates a, on point to our business because think about any task you have to outsource, any kind of repetitive thing that you want, you're tired of doing, and it can be overwhelming, right? So a lot of us have been overwhelmed. We had to go through the process of automation until we realized that if you take the time and you dedicate all your attention to that one small thing and you actually enjoy that process, it can become a calming event to actually go through and automate something. It doesn't have to be full of anxiety. It doesn't have to be full of dread and fear. It's something that you can actually get into and focus on. It's similar to uh, when uh, I talked, uh, what was it we were talking, uh, David, about uh, folding the laundry. You know, everybody, nobody wants to fold the laundry. I love folding the laundry. Every time I fold the piece of laundry, I think about the person. It's my son, my daughter, my wife. I think a nice thought. So it's actually a calming event. So automating your systems, automating something in your life that's difficult doesn't have to be dreadful. Take the time, enjoy the process, document what you're doing, and then automate that one small part. So uh, that's how it relates and has a little horse uh, kind of anecdote too. So that's pretty cool. That's very cool. <laughs> I, I've got, I've, I can't find any fault with it. So now I've got all this built up angst to ask Eric <laughs> Peterson <laughs> for his tip of the week. You know the, you know the problem with the quotes so though. Hold on, man. The problem with the quote. I couldn't get away. I couldn't get away. Is that, is that we're not quite sure what they mean. Like he just I explained what it meant. <laughs> uh, but I'm not so sure that like, it's like, it would be like speaking a foreign language to me. And then you, you're the translator. Like, this is what it means. 
<laughs> Life is interpretation, right, Mark? I mean, really? That's yeah, the, yeah. What I mean, think of it. Trust, I don't know. Trust I don't know. me, if Scott was at his favorite steakhouse and that quote was up there, he'd completely get it. But the fact that it's like, <laughs> you know, I, not, I get it. I get it. I'm just, you know, uh, I don't know. I get it. Not necessary. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So uh, now, now to probably one of the best tips of the week, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> Man, everybody's been slammed so far. Good luck, Eric. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, this week it's going to be a book. Um, hopefully I can't go wrong with a book. Um, yes, so you can. The, yeah. It depends who wrote it. <laughs> yeah. Depends how fast you read it too, apparently. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. So this is uh, delivering happiness, a path to profits, passion and purpose by uh, Tony Shea. It's about Zappos and um, you know, basically how he built the business and, and uh, you know, brought it to what it is today. Um, so it's, it's, pretty highly focused on customer service. Um, you know, that's obviously a big, um, point of Zappos. Um, but, uh, it's, it's been a, a good read. What, what was your biggest takeaway on it? Um, I'm probably three quarters of the way done. Um, but it's just, it's been very interesting to me to, to see kind of his path that he took to, to get there, his history, what, what he did before Zappos and how Zappos struggled through the, you know, early years and how, um, over time they, they kind of decided that, you know, customer service was going to be their, their main, um, marketing tool essentially. And, um, he just really focuses on that. And, um, I just, I always enjoy, um, reading or, or listening about how other companies were built and um, different entrepreneur stories and things like that. So. All right. Well, not a lot to, uh, to really rip on this week. Un- unfortunately, I mean, right. Great. talk about having your bubble burst. <laughs> <laughs> no, no app today. Like, no, you know, had nothing. to play it safe. Played it very Just to safe. welcome you back. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. So last, well, not, certainly, but not least, Scott Todd from landmodo.com. By the way, Eric, uh, how are your listings going on Landmodo? Good. I, I need to um, get some more listings up there. I've, I've been a little bit behind on getting all my most recent ones up there, but um, the ones that are up there, um, you know, are, are bringing some traffic. Um, so any traffic is good by me. Yeah. One of my so. favorite uh, calls to ignore now is from the land flipping companies like lands of America.com. I love it. They're like, Oh, you never knew it. One fifty nine a month. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm good. Take me off your list. So uh, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, I, I have an old book. Okay. Like this goes back like to the last century for Pete's sake. It's wow. a book called The Science of Getting Rich. It's older yeah. than Mixmax. It is, yeah, but it's a classic, unlike okay. Mixmax. Okay, and the thing about The Science of Getting Rich is really, um, you know, it's really all about mindset, right? Like if you, if you understand that, that everything that you want to achieve, you can do so, and you just have to follow this formula like you would in algebra or in math, well, then that, that's kind of like the, the teachings of this book, The Science of Getting Rich. And, you know, one of my favorite quotes from there is, is he says, there are three motives for which you live or we live. We, we live for the body, we live for the mind, and we live for the soul. And basically, no one of these is better or holier than, than the other. All are alike desirable so, you know, it's really, it's really about a, a balanced approach. And I think that when you have the right mindset, then you can really accomplish anything. On the Facebook group the other day, David put a billboard up that uh, it was a picture of the lottery and it said, you know, cash for life, $20,000 a month, cash for life or something. And, you know, I, he was basically saying what a lot of people don't realize is that you can create a uh, passive income that will do the same thing. You don't need the lottery to do that. And it's funny because I, I went to the, uh, to the grocery store the other day and, uh, of course they had, um, they had the lottery up there and it was, you know, a thousand dollars a day cash for life. And I thought, wow, that'd be pretty cool to win that. Wait a minute. I've already won that. 
and I didn't need the lottery. So, you know, it's all about mindset. It's all about what you do with it. And this book is a great one to, uh, to help you get into the right mindset. Even if you are in the right mindset, check it out. Science of it. Getting Rich, is that what it is? The Science of Getting Rich. Excellent book on Audible. It's like a two and a half hour listen. Sounds very like zenny. 1.25x, you can get it done in less than two hours. Perfect book. All right, fantastic. Um, well, I'm going to throw Eric uh, a lob here. And I'm actually going to give a website as my tip of the week, which I'm very scared to do. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyways. It is crowd boost. Now, it's not spelled crowd with an O. So eliminate the O. It's just C R W D and then boost.com. And, you know, it's, it's something that I just found. And I thought, well, this can kind of be kind of cool because the younger generation is on Instagram um, a lot more these days than, than anything else. And why not? you know, see what we can do on Instagram um, for the millennials, right? So what this site does is for 20 bucks a month, they start building up your Instagram and Twitter accounts um, and figuring out the, 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 you know, the perfect audience for you, right? And, and targeting that, off, that, that audience. So they get to know you, then they create a unique campaign for you. Then you just sit back um, watching your, your brand grow in this curated campaign. And um, uh, the person that recommended to me really is, is getting good, good results out of it at 20 bucks a month. So I don't know. No, not, I mean, nothing. Repeat no, that, no. That website again. CRWDboost.com. I know it's no air table. But it is good. By the way, I'm loving Airtable. Are you guys loving Airtable? Yeah. Y yes and no. Wait, Scott, you're on mute. You I said that was the best tip of the week I ever gave. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, yeah. Uh, Mark, I, I don't know. Like, I, I hear you, but uh, on this crowd boost. Uh, I think it's cool, but I don't know if it's going to directly reflect land sales, right? I mean, who's our customer already? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's more for... I mean, uh, I, like the land geek side of things, I could see it doing, doing really well, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I, th I for think... For 20 bucks a month. Well, I think Instagram could be good for, you know, our land photos, and, and getting that awareness out to the millennials that, you know, you can own this asset and kind of, you know, have this experience on these properties that, that you want. I mean, look, are the, are the, are, is our ideal customer going to be hanging out on Instagram? I don't think so. I mean, Scott, are you, in, are you on Instagram? Uh, I am on Instagram. Uh, I like Instagram. Okay. I mean, Eric, you're younger. Are you on Instagram? I am personally, not, not from a business standpoint. Okay. Uh, David, are you hanging out at all on Instagram? That's my second favorite social media platform. <laughs> all mean, right. So, I mean, you can see Facebook. like, <laughs> I mean, you can see like people are on there. Um, I'm sure there's a way to start warming up this cold audience and getting your Instagram followers and, and doing it. And, you know, for 20 bucks a month, you know, that's, that's less than a buck a day to start building your, your reach. I don't know. I'm going to try it, Mark. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. We'll, we'll come back to it. But right. not, a, not a lot of, uh, you know, attention on this, this podcast. I guess that's what happens when you take a month off. I'm skeptical about anything that you have to pay to build your social audience. So that's where I'm coming from. Okay. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, so um, that's number four. Everyone is happy on their thing. So I don't know, David. <laughs> So one, two, number four. Everyone is happy. So how, I don't know, David. There, there's and there's no contract. Everyone's happy. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm always I've always been open to be, having my mind changed. Uh, you you guys personally. Don't you want to be happy? Because everybody on this thing is. Not happy. <laughs> Social proof. <laughs> if anything, use their marketing skills and then sell your land that way. Have a bunch of happy people on your uh, your website. There you go. There you go. That's a good tip. 
All right. Well, I, th- I thought this, uh, this round table was great. Uh, I want to thank all the listeners. I want to remind everybody the only way that we can stay motivated to get this many people on a round table is if you just do us a little favor, you got to subscribe, you got to rate and you need to review the podcast. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash. Uh, I, I think dash tunes review or iTunes dash review. I think it's iTunes dash review. And uh, we'll walk you through how to do that. Um, send us a screenshot of the review. We'll send you for free. The $97 passive income launch kit if you're interested in how to enter you know get to boot camp or the toolkit or flight school or one-on-one coaching or the automation lg pass whatever it is schedule a call go to the forward slash training get on a call with david or mike and they'll walk you through it and see if it's right for you um right, guys are we good we're good, we're good mark yeah. yeah thank you all right are we still doing the let freedom ring thing Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. One, <laughs> two, three. Let, Let freedom ring. ring. That was ding, really ding, good. Ding, ding. That was, I liked it. That was good. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, see everybody next week.